We have rather compelling evidence that about 30% of our cancers relate to our dietary habits. That, that's a pretty profound number if you really think about it, that about thir a third of your cancers could be eliminated if we could uh, design the ideal diet. If you think about it, uh, then you must assume that those foods are supplying some bioactive food component. Those are often taken in the form uh, of dietary supplements. And while there is some logic of consuming those dietary supplements to uh, prevent a nutritional inadequacy, a, a deficiency in other words, uh, we really don't know enough about those isolated compounds and how they really inhibit cancer or if they in fact do inhibit cancer. The best evidence is actually with foods and it possibly is because those foods supply more than one individual component. So it may be multiple components and the same food item, a tomato for example, that would offer some real benefits where lycopene by itself may not offer as many benefits. Here at the National Cancer Institute, we're spending a fair amount of time understanding nutrigenomics. What that really means is the interactions between what you eat and your genes. What we're really talking about is personalized nutrition when we talk about nutrigenomics. So we need to understand genetics and how it plays a role in determining whether you get a benefit or a risk from changing your dietary habits. It's going to take us time, but we still have evidence that going back to a, a reduced caloric diet, higher in fruits and vegetables, lower in meat, reduces risk of cancer. And those are things that we should still be talking about for the general population. But I will re uh, mention that there are reports from the American Institute for Cancer Research, the World Cancer Research Fund, uh, that provide some recommendations to consumers about what they should and should not eat. We are actually are doing a number of uh, clinical intervention studies uh, to examine the benefits of uh, either foods, uh, change in fruit and vegetable consumption, for example, or isolated components uh, such as uh, omega-3 fatty acids uh, from fish. We're going to have to look at, obviously, the quantity needed to bring about a response, the duration to bring about a response, and how genetics uh, influences that overall response. I think there's a lot of excitement about nutrition. I think it is uh, an area that somehow we have thought has, is very simple, but it is not very simple. We need to spend a lot more time understanding what these foods are doing and under what circumstances, and I think we're headed for a bright future for doing so.